In existence for centuries, glass carries an intriguing or mystical quality for many art enthusiasts. While the first evidence of man-made glass occurs in Mesopotamia in the late 3rd, early 2nd millennium, the Phoenicians are generally credited with developing the art of glass blowing. The earliest known blown glass was found near Jerusalem and dated circa 50 to 40 BCE. Until the 19th century, glass was expensive and highly valued. However, with the rise of industry, glass became more ordinary and simply functional. In 1962, Harvey Littleton, a ceramics professor, and Dominic Labino, a chemist and engineer, held two workshops in the Toledo Museum of Art, during which they started experimenting with melting glass in a small furnace and creating blown glass art. This approach to glass blowing blossomed into a worldwide movement known as the Studio Glass Movement. The Studio Glass Movement of the past 45 years has taken the best of glass making traditions out of the factories and placed it in the hands of artists. These artists coupled centuries-old techniques with unbridled enthusiasm and American know-how. They explored avenues of glassmaking free from the constraints of mass production. The major tools involved are the blowpipe, the punty, marver, tweezers, and a variety of shears. The transformation of raw materials into glass takes place around 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. The glass emits enough heat to appear almost white hot. The glass is then left to fine out, allowing the bubbles to rise out of the mass. The tip of the blowpipe is first preheated, then dipped into the molten glass in the furnace. The molten glass is gathered onto the blowpipe in much the same way that honey is picked up on a dipper. Then this hot glass is rolled on the marver, which was traditionally a flat slab of marble, but today is more commonly a thick flat sheet of steel. This forms a cool skin on the exterior of the molten glass and shapes it. Then air is blown into the pipe, creating a bubble. Once a piece has been blown to its approximate final size, the bottom is finalized. There are many ways to apply patterns and color to blown glass, including rolling molten glass in powdered color or larger pieces of colored glass called frit. Complex patterns with great detail can be created through the use of cane, which are rods of colored glass. These pieces of color can be arranged in a pattern and picked up by rolling a bubble of molten glass over them. Glass blowing has undergone many changes throughout time. The art and techniques of manufacture have been heavily influenced by the people and cultures that have embraced it, nurtured it, and developed it beyond their own expectations. What the future holds for the art of glass blowing is anyone's guess.